This is the final video in our LinkedIn training series, and in this one we're going to take a look at a couple different ways to start expanding our network and building connections. An important concept to understand in LinkedIn is that in order for two people to become connected, one person has to initiate a connection request, and the second person needs to approve that. The first example we're going to look at for adding someone to our network is the most straightforward way and one that we'll probably use pretty often. That is, we're going to look up somebody who we know and we want to connect with that we believe has or know has a LinkedIn profile. So the way we do that is coming up to, this is our search bar up here, and there's a drop-down box that allows you to search using different criteria. People, companies, groups, etc., etc. What we're really going to go after right now is we're going to look up uh, somebody by name, and so we're going to leave it at the default of search for people. Uh, as a, an example, I'm going to type in my real profile name, Ed Jones, and click on the search button. And we will see right here there are 22,256 Ed Joneses currently uh, having profiles in the LinkedIn network. Uh, interesting fact is that out of these 22,256, when I did a search for Ed Jones, I showed up uh, number three, so I'm very near the top of the very first page. There's a good reason for that. I described earlier on how important it is to have a complete profile using LinkedIn's definition of completeness. It's also important to have a large number of contacts. Mine isn't huge, it's 300 and some, but it's uh, probably larger than, uh, than your average profile owner. So I was able to easily locate Ed Jones when I did a search for him because Ed Jones has uh, played nice by LinkedIn's rules. Now that we've found the profile of the person we're interested in connecting to, we're going to come up here and initiate that request. The way I'm going to do that, uh, we could just simply come over here and click on Add to Network, but I'm going to uh, click on the name here, which is the link to Ed Jones's profile. You may remember that during one of the setup videos, I said that it was very important to have your email address ready, readily visible in your profile. Here you can see that uh, it, that is the case in my personal profile that I've set up for myself. Uh, we're about to discover why that is. I'm going to come over here and click on Add Ed to your network. When I do that, since Ed is not connected to me by any other person or group or organization of which I'm a member, it is going to prompt me to add Ed's email address. The reason for that is, is uh, LinkedIn wants to prevent people from just spamming other people with uh, gazillions of invitation requests. So there is an, uh, an attempt by LinkedIn to validate that this person knows them in some way or another. So I'm going to add in Ed's uh, email address that he used to set up his account. Now, there's a default message that gets sent when an invitation gets sent out to someone you want to connect with, and that is, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. It's usually a good idea, at least it's a social kind of thing, to uh, add something uh, to that. So, hi, uh, long time no see. Now that I'm, uh, I put that in, I'm ready to click on Send Invitation. I will click that. I will get an acknowledgement that I have sent that invitation to Ed Jones, showing the email address it has been sent to. And we're now ready to take a look at what Ed Jones is going to see. So we'll be prepared when people send us invitations to know what it's going to look like. I've now switched over to my Ed Jones profile uh, where I'm logged in as Ed Jones and notice that up here in my inbox I've got a little number one that's popped up and when I hover over that I will see that Ralph Smith has sent me an invitation to connect with them on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm, I have no reason not to so I'm going to click on accept and Ed, you and Ralph Smith are now connected. 
you, Ralph Smith, have done your job, sent out a connection request. Ed Jones has received that request and acknowledged that and established the connection. And now that Ed Jones has uh, accepted our connection request, we come over here on our profile view. We'll see under connections, we now have one connection. So congratulations, we've connected to our first person and we now have a LinkedIn network. So I haven't gone through that sample exercise of how to find somebody and establish a connection with them. We're ready to start building a real network. I highly recommend that the first thing we do is begin finding the people that we work with on LinkedIn and connecting to them. So again, using the same thing we did before, come up to look up David Rabata. Click on him. Now, he came up uh, at the very top of my list, and the reason that happened is that he is a second level connection, a second degree contact of mine. That means that he is connected to someone that I am connected to. In this particular case, I'm connected to Ed Jones, which we did during the sample exercise, and Ed Jones is connected to David Rabata. Again, LinkedIn attempts to make it easier for you to find people that you're most likely searching for in case there happen to be a whole bunch of people with that same name in LinkedIn. I'm not going to send that invitation to Dave right now. I was just showing an example to look up. So let's come back to Profile view profile and take a look at the next way that I recommend for finding people to connect with on LinkedIn. This is through a facility that they support called Groups. A group is a forum where people can get together, share ideas, have discussions, uh, and so forth. So let's come down and change people to groups in our search bar so that we can search for those criteria. And let's type in uh, uh, some keywords that we're looking for here. Material handling is a good one because it's a part of our industry. You can be creative. You can look at conveyor, logistics, uh, whatever. But right now, let's focus on this. Uh, it linked in based on the keywords material handling has brought up several examples. Let's take a look at uh, Mahita, the Material Handling Equipment Distributors Association. And that is a group that we all want to join is one in which Flowstore participates and we want to be active. In order to join a LinkedIn group, we have to ask for permission to become a member of that group. So we're going to come over here and click on Join Group. That will submit a uh, request to the group administrator to join that particular group. So click on that. Your request has been received and you can adjust your settings here. Our request to join this group has been submitted and is pending approval. Notice right here, membership is pending approval. Once the group administrator has approved us, we will get a little message up here, a little number like we had earlier when we had a, an invitation come through on the inbox uh, notifying us that we have a message. That will contain a message notifying us that we have been approved to join that group. Rather than wait for that to happen, we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, my profile so I can show you what a group looks like once you're a member of it. The best way to look at the groups uh, which you're a member of is to come to Groups here, pull down to Your Groups. At that point, LinkedIn will display a list of all the groups uh, which you're a member. And uh, notice up here I'm still pending approval on one that I tried to sign up for the other day. So let's come to Material Handling Inst Industry of America. I'm going to go look at that group. Once I go there, since I am a member, I have the ability of starting a discussion or chiming in on a discussion already in progress. So let's take a look here. Uh, uh, one of the people has put in a question uh, or started a discussion on advice for a good mobile cart solution. I'm not really going to follow through on this, but if I was interested in doing so, I could click on Add Comment, in which case I could answer or join this discussion. This is a very valuable, I'm going to close that because I don't have anything to add to this discussion at this point. 
that's a very valuable way of networking within the LinkedIn community. People begin to see your name and you begin to uh, become recognized by people in the group. One of the most important advantages of being a member of a group is the opening it gives you to other people who are members of that group in order to add them to your network. So let's come down to the Members tab here, click on that, and notice there are 2,230 members in here. It is going to show us all of the members of this group. Now I'm going to look for somebody who's not currently in my network that I want to add. Up here it's telling me all the people here on the first page, in fact in this particular group probably the first couple pages are a first level connection. Those aren't people that I need to connect with, those are people I'm already connected to. Anytime you see a first on there it's telling me that you're already connected. In fact I'm going to skip over to about the fifth page here because I'm uh, connected to, hey, good guess. Alright, so here's a person named uh, Trip Young to whom I'm not connected directly. He's a second level connection, which means he's connected to someone to whom I am connected. Come over and click on Invite to Connect. Click on that. Now we have an opening to connect with that person. Since we're a member of the same group, how do you know this person? Click on Groups. Choose a group. We obviously belong to more than one group in common. In this particular case, it was through the Material Handling Industry of America, and I will click on Send Invitation. I have now sent out an invitation to uh, this trip person and uh, invited them to join my network. In my personal experience, this is the most effective way to get people to connect with you on LinkedIn. I rarely send out an invitation to a group member and have a uh, rejection of that invitation. So this is a good way to, uh, to build your network. We're going to take a look in a second here at one more final way that uh, I'm going to recommend we use to build our networks. The last method we're going to look at for connecting people or finding people to connect with in this video series is going after a targeted company. So we'll come to our search box drag down to companies and click on that. Let's say for example that we decide we're, uh, we're perhaps pursuing a sale or we have a contract going with IBM. So let's look up IBM, click on Information Technology and Services. At that point we can click on Employees and what we want to do is we want to start building a network of people within IBM because we want to have connections there uh, either, as I said, for an ongoing project or because we want to go after a contract. So come down and start scrolling through the employees. And here is a uh, person named Mark D. All it's showing us is uh, the last initial since they're not networked with us uh, in any particular way here. So we'll click on Mark D. And at this point, we've got his individual profile up and we could add Mark to our network. Okay, that's the conclusion of this video series. Thank you for your attention. I hope it was useful to you. Dave and uh, Megan will be your front line of support and will be getting in touch with me if there are any questions they can't answer. I'll be happy to help you out in any way we can and I look forward to seeing you soon and connecting with you on LinkedIn. Have a great day.